Hello everyone and welcome to a new lesson of the Magica Voxel Mastering course. Today we're going to be talking about the matter panel, aka the shaders for Magica Voxel, so you can play a bit with the materials and how your object looks instead of just using the default diffuse material. So let's jump right into it. This scene that I prepared for this lesson is included in the description of this video. If you scroll down, you will be able to download it and maybe you can follow along if you want to. The first thing that I will do is just open my camera controls here with this arrow. And then with this one, when you click load, I already saved the camera for you. So it will just focus on the object in a nice manner. Of course, use the camera however you want it. The second thing I, I would suggest you to do is to change the resolution of the image Basically, these two numbers refer to the dimensions of the image that we are working on. This is on the IPR render, and we're going to talk about other methods to render in, the, in a future video. So let's make this 1500 by 1500. So it's not too big, but we still have some resolution to work with. Then you probably will have 1024 in here. These are your samples. So basically, whenever you move your camera, uh, you see how, that, how the image becomes all noisy and then it starts like cleaning up so the more samples you have the more this image will clean up we're going to talk about samples in depth in a future video too so for now i will just put 10,000. it doesn't really make a difference because the image will progressively uh, continue to develop until you stop it or until you save it so it doesn't really change much if you put a large number it will just like continue to develop for longer nice the next thing i will do is i will just remove my sunlight and I will activate the image based lighting just because I like to have some more information for my reflections and to show you guys better uh, how that works so I will just leave it at zero and I will start from here so these are the basic setup that we will be doing on the scene before starting the next thing will be changing a bit this color I'm using a pure almost pure actually green for this, uh, I will just make it something a bit more uh, natural because this green is not very normal. Uh, it's a very, very shocking green. So I will just make it something a bit darker. So just choose a color that is not fully saturated and fully bright. So let's make something a bit more natural. Okay, so if you look at your image right now, you will notice that your object doesn't have any reflections, doesn't have any specular, which means the amount of reflections that an object has basically. This is because we are using this diffuse material. So you see that it's very dull. So if we change it to the metal instead, you're gonna see that automatically your objects change a lot, right? So now it has reflections and this metallic slider is all the way to the right. You, you're, you might find it to be all the way to the left. So the more you increment it on into the right, the more metalness properties this material will have. And this is why I like to call these little squares materials because they also save these material properties within it. If I change to the next one, you notice that now it says diffuse instead of metal. So each one of them can have unique material properties. And that's why I like to call this the material palette instead of the color palette. Okay, so what other options we have within the metal shader? And I suggest you that if you're making metal, choose this one. You can also make metal with using the other shaders but just to keep it simple use the one if you're making metal just use the metal one and etc but you will see that you can make metal with others so you see here you have the roughness so the more roughness you add the less sharp the reflection will become so basically if you wanted to make a mirror you put the roughness in zero and you could put the color all the way to white and this object will become a mirror but instead if you want to make a more uh, rough material uh, you can add more roughness and then these reflections will become more and more blurry right so play with that to get at the effect that you that you want and you see that very small amounts of rough roughness already creates quite a bit uh, removes quite a bit of sharpness from your reflections but if you don't have any reflections the problem with square objects the voxel objects are hard to lead because you see here it really becomes a bit of a mess so sometimes you will want to remove some of the metalness add some roughness and if you have a color that is not so bright you're gonna start having a bit more shape to, to your object and a bit more of a metallic look instead of that mirror perfect look that we just had a second ago nice 
So what else do we have? The IOR stands for refractive index. So this won't really change much unless you have a transparent material, but if you move it up and down in other kinds of materials, what you will get is more influence on the reflection. So your reflections will be brighter if you make this higher up. Every object in reality has an index of refraction uh, and that's why like water looks different than glass or than honey and stuff like that. So if you Google in the index of refraction of water, you can know the different numbers. And uh, so water is 1.33, but we're going to see that in a minute when we are talking about the glass material. For now, let's just leave it at 133. And then the specular basically won't really make a big difference on the metallic materials, but basically will add some extra brightness to your reflection. You see, if I add this, uh, then the specular will kick in and it will be lighting a bit these little parts there. Let's continue on now with the next material, which is the emissive material. So if I choose this material, basically out of the box, the emissive material will ignore the shadows and ignore the lighting. So therefore you will have this pure color on, on your object. So whatever color you choose, you will have 100% of that color reflected on your object. If you wanted the emissive materials to actually, to actually emit photons of light, what you can do is start ramping up this value. So the emission on its own, it won't really do much. It will just make it appear brighter, but it will start producing light when you add the power. So the more power you add, the more this object will emit light. It doesn't look perfect just now because you need to add some things here to make it look a bit better. If you go to the camera options here, and we're going to talk about in depth about the camera in a future video, you can press the bloom button here when you click it it will start creating uh, a bit of a halo around the object so you can make it uh, appear more glowy. Other than that, you can just add more power if you want this to emit more light or less if you just want it to be a solid color, more of a cartoony style, 2D pixel art style. Okay, great. So moving on, we have the glass material. Um, in this kind of material, you have new options again. So if I go all the way transparent here, uh, you will see that now this object will start having uh, a bit of the color and a bit of the transparency. Just to show you, I will use another model that I have saved here for you. Instead of the cube field, I will use the solid cube. And notice how the, the more density of voxels that you have, the more color will have and the smaller density, the less of the color will have and will have more pure transparency. So you see how in these like thinner areas is transparent with no color and in the bigger areas we see much more of the original color that we have on our material. This can also be changed by changing the density. The less density we add, the less of the color will be translated within the transparent material. If we go all the way to the density, it will be much more vivid and darker the color of the material. Uh, in this case, the face doesn't really change much. You can do some tests, but it's very negligible the difference that it makes. So all you need to know is transparency makes your object transparent. Something cool to have too is within the samples, you can activate TR shadow, which means transparent shadows, and this will make it so that the shadows that your object casts are not solid, like if it was a solid object. So if I find, so if I now, for instance, uh, bring back the sun just to show you how that works, I will just remove the intensity of the HDRI. Now you see how this shadow is green and is fading on the sides and less, less intense on the sides. And if I remove transparent shadows, it will become a dark uncolored shadow. So this will make it uh, work so much better. So this is a very important thing to have activated when you're working with transparent materials. Let me just bring that HDRI back. Furthermore, we have uh, the roughness, which will make it uh, a more perfectly transparent object or a very, very frosted kind of glass. Uh, so you can choose depending on what you're trying to do one or the other. I can make this like a, a more uh, bluish color. So it resembles a bit more of uh, a glass material. And you see how that darkness will influence a lot 
how these reflections are working. Furthermore, on the reflections, we have the index of refraction that we were talking about. So right now, 133 is the inter index of refraction of water. And if you want like the index of refraction of glass is 1.52. It won't really make a big difference if you see when you change the index of refraction, the reflections look different, but it's not that one looks like water and the other looks like glasses. It's more for when you're talking about hyper-realistic rendering and stuff like that. So basically the more index of refraction you add, the more the light will be distorted within the object. So if you go all the way down to almost one, you will see that you can pretty much see through this object without much breaking of the light within it. If you go 1.33, you will see how those uh, refra refractions uh, change a lot. You have other options here, but we're gonna talk about these options on their respective uh, materials. So this is for the glass. You can change the color, index of refraction, and the density and the transparency. Cool. So now let's move on to the blend material. And this is one of my favorite materials. I use this for everything, honestly. And one little thing you need to do when you go to your blend material is to make sure to remove things from other materials because this is a bit of a blend of several materials, basically. So I use it for the subsurface scattering, which is this little S here. If you click it, you will notice that your object becomes a bit like rubbery or porcelain. So basically subsurface scattering is when light enters the object and bounces within the object. That's why rubber looks different than solid plastic or wood. Uh, you will notice that rubber has like lighting penetrating it. Also the same when you're talking about porcelain or some marbles that the light gets into it and it looks a bit transparent, but it's still a solid object. So basically the more transparency you add, you will see that let's make a color that we can in which we can see it better maybe a red color uh, with some saturation you will notice that right now this is more of a solid object and the more transparency i add it will start creating a bit of an effect you see how it brightens up here in the middle and the edges look a bit different you lose a bit uh, the contrast on the object because the light is bouncing within it it's not too obvious on thin, thinner objects as it, as it should be. It's not perfect, but it's very, very good and it looks very nice in general. Uh, and then the density will basically input more or less uh, the saturation of the color on the object. The face, again, in this material doesn't really change much. You can make some tests, but for what I find, it doesn't really change too much. So same for the index of refraction. If you move it all the way up, what you will see is that your reflections becomes brighter. And if you move it all the way down, you will just not really have reflections at all. So you can leave it at 133. So you have, um, sorry, here, uh, 1.33. So you have something. And uh, then the specular, again, it will just add some extra reflection into your object if you need it. And metallic, if you add it, it will just change to a fully metallic object. So it becomes a bit weird. This is a bit more of an experimental, hacky material. That's why I like it so much. And you can have some roughness here and this will make your object more rough. And something that I love to do with this material is to add edges. So if you look down here, you have display edges. So if you click it, this will add some color to your edges. But a little trick I like to do is if you go to the settings here, you can open the edge panel and make it thinner. And what I like to do is have it on a, have it kind of visible, not too thin. And then I change the color to match, pretty much the color that I'm using. So in this case, it's a bit of a red. And this gives you uh, this effect that makes it so the object doesn't look so sharp on the edges. So it makes it a bit more like it has rounded edges and it adds in my opinion it adds a lot of readability to your object so you can really see all of the parts so i really like how it looks the only problem is that it will add this edge everywhere it would be awesome to have an option in magica voxel to have these edges matching the color of the voxels that would be amazing i would love that option but yeah right now you can only have one edge that will uh, paint all of the edges of the scene with that color so lastly we're going to talk about the cloud material so if you click it 
you will see that your object starts becoming transparent and to see it properly I made a special model for this lesson which is stored in this layer called cloud so I'll turn that on and I will close the cube field and the base just to show you this model so you see right now the cloud is very faint and um, something important when you're working with clouds is good to go to your samples and turn on this M is scatter which stands for multiple importance sampling so what this does is it blurs out the cloud a bit more and make it look a bit nicer so you might see that this cloud already looks pretty neat but it's not very thick so if you wanted to have a cloud that is less wispy and something thicker a little trick that you have is you can only go up to 100 with your slider but you can change this by hand to let's say 200 and this will make your cloud start becoming a bit more visible and a bit more shaped so you can go all the way to 1000 I, th I don't know I think you can just put any number here and it will start looking a bit like foam so this is a good trick if you want to make something that looks foamy but otherwise just leave it at 250 that in general should be enough and remember to have the MIS scatter turned on this on its own it will already give you a nice effect if we turn the light around we might try to find a better illumination for this cloud or we could also change the environment completely and uh, instead of using one of the three offered by Magica Voxel you can go to Polyheaven the website that I recommended you last time and just try different HDRIs and see what they give you if they give you something more interesting maybe some colors that are good looking uh, and who knows maybe you can find something that you like better just bear in mind when you're downloading it from polyheaven you will find this website just click where it says hdris then you can see here in these spheres how this hdri affects the shadows and how it affects and uh, the refraction so you can have a bit of an idea of what you're gonna get with this uh, all you need to do is just click one of them and in here when it says hdri make sure that it doesn't say EXR it needs to be an HDRI for you to import it into Magica Voxel then you can just download it and once you have it you double click here and you navigate to wherever this was downloaded so in this case it's this one and this is what we get as a result you see that the shadow is like much much uh, more intense in this one so maybe that's something you want more of a sunny day shadow instead of a, a more blurry shadow and you can see that this shadow is looking pretty interesting just try different uh, HDRIs to see the difference between one or the other and see what works better with what you're trying to do this was all for this lesson I hope you enjoyed it and that you managed to learn some more stuff about materials if you have any questions just leave it in the comments I'm thinking about making uh, when the course is over one last video answering complex questions that you guys are leaving on, on the messages just open one by one and explaining them in Magica Voxel so if there's something that you want to know leave it in the comments down there and I will try to answer it thank you and see you on the next video